Hey everyone, how are we doing today? I hope we're doing good. I hope we're doing great. Um, I bless God. I give Him glory. I give Him honor. I give Him praise for all He has done and all that He's doing. Um, today we're just gonna have a conversation, okay? <laughs> because um, I don't know. The Holy Spirit has just been teaching me certain things, and I think that that's something that a lot of us need to learn. So today we're going to be talking about diabolical Christianity. But before we do that, um, let's quickly pray. Father, we thank you, we exalt you, we give you praise, we magnify your name, O oh God, for who you are. It's end of days, we exalt you, we thank you, Abba Father, because you are the beginning, you are the end, you are the voice of Shari, you are the I am that I am. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise because it belongs to you dear god have mercy upon me oh god in whichever way i've gotten it wrong with you father let your mercy find me let your mercy speak for me have mercy upon your people god in whichever way they've gotten it wrong with you father let your mercy find us right now in the name of your son yeshua lord we thank you for today because today is the day that you have made and will rejoice and be glad in it lord we have gathered here to do your business not my business or the business of anybody or anything but your business there god so we ask oh god king of glory that you empower us you strengthen us sweet gentle spirit of god we we'll welcome you come take preeminence come take control we cannot do this by our strength we cannot do it by our power we we'll rely on you solely give me the words to speak to your people and convince the hearts of your people thank you gentle spirit of god have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. May I not say what I haven't been asked to say or do what I haven't been asked to do. May everything that will be done today be done according to your divine will, dear God. Father, we say thank you. Be thou exalted, O Emmanuel. Be thou exalted, O God. Be thou exalted. Let praise and honor be unto you god in yeshua's name we pray everything be done according to your will oh god not according to my will or the will of anybody or anything father but according to your divine will let your divine will be done today thank you oh god for who you are for what you have done for what you are doing for what you're about to do Father, I will say, praise be your name, O God. Hallowed be your name, Jehovah. Have your way. Set us true and true. If you find any iniquity in us, Jehovah, let your mercy find us this hour. Let your mercy speak for us this hour. In Yeshua's name we have prayed. Amen. 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 All right, people. So today we're going to be having a conversation, right? <laughs> And our conversation is titled um, Diabolical Christianity. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us um, will we'll say we're Christians, right? We'll say we're Christians and everything, but truth be told, we're not Christians. We're not worse than the pagans. We're not worse than um um the 80s those, those that don't believe in christ were like them rather you know so don't come here and don't don't try to condemn others when even you that think that you're doing the right thing you're not doing the right thing you're actually doing what others are doing the difference is that you've called yourself a christian and most people just think that because they say they are Christians, it automatically makes them right in everything that they do, you know. But that's not true. That's not true at all. That's not true at all. But the Holy Spirit has made me to understand that most of us actually practice diabolical Christianity. Now, when we say diabolical, a lot of us might think that 
you know, it's um a lot of a lot of us will say what she's saying, you know, does she even know what she's saying? But honestly, I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. Um give me a moment, please. Okay. So the Holy Spirit made me to understand that a lot of us Christians are practicing diabolical Christianity. Now, when we say diabolical Christianity, we're not talking, we're talking about the things, you know, when something is diabolical, it's bad, you know. It's not what God has said. It's not what God has ordained us to do. It's not what God has commanded us to do, rather. Now, I'm from Africa, right? And then most often when we say diabolical things, you know, we we'll start thinking of... um um like fetish things like you know when people serve the devil and do all sorts of things and all that stuff yes now we as christians actually practice those things as well you know and we know that it is wrong but we we just tend to do it just to make our christianity intense just to make people think that we're, we're good christians but we're actually going against god Today, people are using uh, um, crystals, Christians, actually, I'm actually talking about Christians today. Christians, they're using crystals, they're using sage, they're using, you know, all sorts of things, all in the name of God. And the scripture has made us to understand that the blood of Jesus, that is all that we need. We don't need no crystal. We don't need no sage. We don't need all these things that Christianity is about today that we as Christians now use in place of the blood of Jesus. In the Old Testament, when, when the people were going to the temple, you know, to offer sacrifice to Christ and they were burning incense to, uh, to God and they were burning incense and candles and all those things uh, um, in the temple, that was because the blood of Jesus wasn't made available. That was because the blood of Jesus wasn't available as at that time. Now the blood of Jesus, if God wanted us to burn candles and incense and, and sage and crystals and all these things that we are about today, he wouldn't have sent his son to come die for our sins. He wouldn't have sent his son to come die for our sins. The blood of Jesus is enough to take care of any situation. Demons are not afraid of candles. Demons are not afraid of crystals. Demons are not afraid of incense. Just, you know, contrary to what they make you believe, oh, uh, such uh, words of um, evil spirits and all that. They are not afraid of those things. What they are afraid of is the blood of Jesus. Is that name Jesus. That is what brings liberty. That is what brings uh, of freedom. Today, as Christians, you know, they will say, buy this and buy that and buy that and bring it. We're going to pray, um, get your anointing oil and, um, and all these things that they tell you to buy, you know, for them to, to pray for God to answer your prayer. See, God doesn't need all those things for him to answer your prayer. And that brings me to the major thing that we want to talk about today. Now, when we're in the world, we did all sorts of things. And when those things that we did, because I told us some time ago that whatever thing that we do, it has repercussion, it has consequences. But a lot of us don't understand that. Most often we do things, you know, ignorantly. And when you do something ignorantly, God will forgive. But when you've come to know the truth and still do the same thing, that's where the problem is. So most often we'll do stuff and then when things are not going the way that we want them to go or things are not working out for us anymore, then we tend to turn to God. Oh, God is the only one that can do this. God is the only one that can do that. Yes, God is the only one that can do that. But when you talk to God to do what you, you want him to do, and God says, no, my child, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. Then we become impatient and then we're not ready to wait because truly we didn't turn to God because we want to serve God. We turned to God because we needed help for whatever situation we're in. 
So we have made God a go-to person when there's situation. And then when we're not go when when we're not facing any situation, we don't remember God. That is the kind of Christianity that we have started practicing. A disgraceful Christianity, a bad Christianity, an unpleasant Christianity. That's what we're practicing right now. And that's what diabolical means. And that kind of Christianity is of the devil and it's not of God. And that is what I'm here to discuss with us today. God is not somebody that you just keep by the side and whenever you find yourself in a tight situation or whenever you find yourself going through a situation, you just pick him up and say, oh, come, come, come. I have the situation and I need you to fix it for me. And when you're not going through any situation, you don't care about God. And even when you go to him to fix the situation at your own time, you, we tend to make it about us, our own rules. And God is, God is just there watching us and saying, what are these people doing though? Our God is a mighty God. And this is the time for you to make up your mind on if you want to serve God. And if you want to serve God, you have to do it with all of your heart and all of your mind. You're not going to do it because... Oh, um, whenever you have situation, then you remember that there is a God somewhere. But that is what they've come to teach us. And that's why they say, you know, um, once you've repented, once, or once you're saved, you're saved. So when, when we have that mentality, that is the diabolical Christianity I'm talking about. When we have that mentality that once you've once you're saved, you're saved, we tend to just keep God by the by the by the bench or by the um, by the side, and whenever we need him, we we'll just go and pluck him and use him and then dump him and then continue continue our journey. And when what you want God for us to actually happen, and then we go about and we start saying, oh, he's a bad God, oh, he's this, oh, he's that, oh, he's that. But I want us to understand that God is infinite. God knows everything. And so when you come to God, God already knows the reason why you've come to him. And our God is a very principled God. He has standards. And so most often God will put you through the test as well to show you your heart to you. So you will know that you're not just for him because you love him enough to just want to be obedient and serve him, but you're for him because of what you think you can get from him. We need to stop doing that. We need to stop doing that. And we need to stop teaching the children of God that God is this, the entity that you just go to to get whatever thing that you want to get and that's it. There are requirements. As Christians, real Christians, there are requirements from God to have a relationship with him. We need to stop practicing this diabolical Christianity. The Christianity we practice today is very unpleasant. Where we do things mostly for ourselves, our selfish gains. That is why we keep teaching the children of God the wrong things so they continue to go the wrong way. And God is saying to us today that we need to stop. If you're not willing to speak the truth, you're not being forced to go out there and speak. But if you must go out there and speak, speak the truth.
that what God wants from us is a relationship, an intimate relationship. A relationship is something that happens cons cons um, continuously. Stop teaching the children of God or stop making the children of God see God as an entity where they can just do X, Y, Z and God is going to do whatever it is that they want him to do. So if they pay their tithe, God is going to give them a, 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 um, this. If they sow seed, God is going to give them this. If they do that, God, so because you're teaching them these things, they're not willing to pay the price. They're not willing to actually have an intimate relationship with God where they are obedient and submissive to God. So our main focus should be as Christians, teaching and letting the people understand the importance of being obedient and submissive to God. If we want to practice Christianity, we have to practice Christianity just the way that God has asked us to do. We should stop practicing this diabolical Christianity. When you ask for this and, and, and ask for that and tell them, oh, if they do this and if they do that, God is going to do this. God is going to do this and God is going to do that. Sometimes we don't understand the mightiness of the God that we say we call upon. And so as I lay there, the Holy Spirit was telling me, he said, you see, if you truly love God, no matter what it is that you're asking God for, whether you see it or not, you are, you are, you are, you are, um, Holy Spirit, help me. You're okay. Because your love for God is not about what God can give to you. Your love for God is because you really want to be obedient and submissive to your Father. Now you start teaching all manner of teachings. Is Christ to begin at the blood of Jesus? Is sage bigger than the blood of Jesus? Are all these candle of things that you ask them to do, burning of candles and burning of sage and all these things bigger than the name of Jesus? We have brought the world into Christianity. And that is why we're practicing diabolical Christianity. We started using divination to prophesy because you know that people have itchy ears. They want to hear what God has got to say. They want to know what's in their future. They want to know what is the difference between you and the palm reader? What is the difference between you and, and, and what, what do they call these people? Holy Spirit, help me. Uh, I can't remember. There's no difference between we and them. We have brought that into Christianity. And so we're, we're practicing diabolical Christianity. People want to know their future. People want to know this. People want to know that. And because you want to satisfy people, you go into divination and start to use extra powers. All in the name of serving God, being a prophet or an apostle. God is saying to us today, He's not that kind of God. If you don't want to serve God, it's okay. But don't lead others astray as well. You know what I mean? It's okay. The time has come for us to begin to do the right thing. This, this thing called Christianity.
is destroying lives. Now, 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 people will say, oh, this is this and this is that, all in the name of prophecy, even though they know they are lying, causing havoc in the, in the homes of people. Meanwhile, we're the ones practicing witchcraft, because those things are witchcraft. As a Christian, you're calling somebody's name and you're praying against the person um, for things to be bad for the person or praying against the person um, um, for whatever reason, whatever it is that you're praying against as a Christian. They want to use Psalms to pray, call somebody's name or write somebody's name and you start to pray all sorts of ungodly prayer, yet you say you are a Christian. And you, who are you praying that prayer to? You think God is listening to such prayers? God is not. That is how we practice witchcraft without us even knowing. Most often we know. Because you know that what you're doing is wrong. They tell you to buy all sorts of things for them to pray for you. God doesn't need all those things. We need to wake up as Christians. The blood, that's all that matters. And that is the reason why he sent his son. If God wanted you to burn sage and if God wanted you to use crystals and if God wanted you to burn candles or insects or all these things that we do today, all in the name of Christianity, if God wanted you to do that, God would not have sent his son. What the demons are afraid of is the name of Jesus. The Bible clearly made us to understand that in the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, it didn't say some knees, every knee must bow. So if every knee must bow, then those things that you're born in and, 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 and you're using, what are they going to do? If you want to practice witchcraft, practice witchcraft. Don't say you're, you're a Christian. Because we still don't understand that being a Christian is being Christ-like. It's identifying with Christ. And so when you do these things, you're invariably saying that that's what Christ did. You're invariably saying Christ is okay with these things. But Jesus is saying, I came so you will have life. I died for your sins. To give you a better life. I didn't die for all these things that you have turned it to be today. I didn't die for tithes and offering and seeds. That wasn't why he died. He died to save us all. A lot of people have been deceived with this thing called Christianity. God is saying to us today, Be a part. Don't be like the rest. It doesn't matter if it's popular or not. Because today popularity is what sells. Yes, those are things of the world. And we're meant to understand that we're not of this world. We're meant to understand that. Stand out. Be a part. Don't practice this Christianity that we have come to know. Because it is true, it is a diabolical Christianity. That is not what Jesus has commanded us to do. That wasn't the essence of the great sacrifice. 
The essence is to preach hope. Let people understand that there is a God that can save. If only they will accept Jesus and turn away from sin. Why are we not talking about that anymore? Why are we selling all these things to the children of God and keep leading them astray? Why? When are we going to wake up? Christianity is not about church. It's not about playing church. It's not about all these things that we have made it to be. The heart of the Lord is grieved. Why? Because we keep going deeper and deeper and deeper into sin. We keep turning away from the right way to go. We keep doing things against God in the name of God. People are killing people in the name of God. People are doing all sorts of atrocities in the name of God. And God is saying, but I am not the one that I've sent you to do these things. This is not who I am. Oh, Jesus. We need to stop. We need to start saying the truth. If you don't want to save God, it is okay. No one is forcing you to do that. But please, it is a personal decision. Don't also lead others astray and destroy the lives of others with your lies, with your cooked up stories. Every day people wake up, they don't know which way to go. They don't know what to do. Because Mr. A is saying this, God said this. Mr. B is saying this, God said that. Mr. C is saying this, God said that. But God is saying, I am not saying any of those things. All I'm saying to you is, accept my son Jesus and turn away from sin. And focus on me. And love one another. That's all that he's saying. Not all these cooked up stories that we tell here and there. We need to start speaking the truth. We owe ourselves that. If you say you are a Christian and you're practicing Christianity, it is time for you to speak up. It is enough. It is enough. It is enough. Souls are perishing every day. Nobody cares. Everybody's looking for a fast way. There is no fast way with God. There is no fast way. It's either his way or no way. We've been commanded to serve God in truth and in spirit. Our God is a God of truth. There is no lie in him. So where are we learning all these things from? Isn't that supposed to let us understand that that is not God? The diabolical Christianity is the Christianity that is overtaken by the world. Now today, all we care about, we we'll go to churches and all, it, all they care about is shows. This is coming to do this. This is coming to do that. See, if you, want to, if you want to have shows, be in the world. Teach the children of God how to war for their destinies. How to war for others. Don't, don't, don't show them how to be entertained because the world is already teaching them how to be entertained. They are in the world, they run from the world and they come to the church. The church is also entertaining them. 
Where then will they go to? Where will they run to? The church is supposed to be where they can, they can, they can, they can, they can, they can have solace. There is no difference between you that is practicing diabolical Christianity and the fortune tellers and the palm readers and the astrologists, the witches, the wizards, the sorcerers. There is no difference. There is no difference. So ask yourself today, what manner of Christianity are you practicing? Are you being Christ-like? Are you obeying the commandments of God? Or you're practicing diabolical Christianity, the Christianity of this world. That is why I encourage us every day. Every time I come online, I tell us, it is better to have it is better to know God for yourself than to know God through anybody. Because truth be told, the Holy Spirit cannot deceive you. But man can. Like man has been deceiving us all this while. We have a great work ahead of us. But how can we even do this work? When we don't even know whom we serve. If you truly serve God and you have his spirit in you, you will have discernment. You will be able to discern when they are lying to you, when this is of God, and when this is not of God. You will be able to. That's the beauty of having an intimate relationship with God. Not an intimate relationship with your pastor or your church. But with him that has called us all. There is no better relationship than the relationship with God. Forget religion and build a relationship with God. Because that is what is important. That is what is important. Christianity is to be Christ-like. Christianity means that you believe in Christ. You believe that he came and died for our sins and resurrected his heart after the third day. You believe that God sent his son to come die for your sins. That blood that was shed is very expensive. That blood is what will save you. Not sage, not crystals, not all these things that they talk about today. Not even your pastor can save you. It is the blood of Jesus. 
That is why it's like that blood is not effective. Because most often, it's called in vain. Most often, it's called in vain. And you're wondering why we're not seeing the power of God working. You must be trusted by God. For him to demonstrate his powers through you. You must believe to the point of no return. That even though the enemy comes against you. Even though momentarily you feel a certain type of way. That God does not exist. You still find your way back to your God. Because you know deep down inside of you. That he is real. And that is why he said that he resides in your heart. He said that he's going to put his laws in our heart and write them on our minds. So before you take that step, you already know that this is against God. Yet to we'll take the step anyways. The real Christians, those that truly practice Christianity, stop letting others to, to, to uh, cover your voice. It is time to speak up and speak the truth. Stop letting those that practice diabolical Christianity to shut you down. It is time to rise up and speak the truth. Because he that is in you is so much more greater than he that is in the world. You know the truth. Speak the truth. Because it is the truth that will set you free. Stop wondering, oh, they're going to condemn me. They condemn Jesus. Or stop saying, oh, they're going to condemn me. They condemned Jesus when he came out to speak the truth. You have to come out to speak the truth. You can't be in your house to speak the truth. You can't be hidden to speak the truth. You must come out and face any consequences that comes with speaking the truth. We need to stop being afraid because he has not given us a spirit of fear. But of love and of sound mind. Why then are you afraid? Why are the real Christians so afraid and quiet? Jesus was not quiet. He spoke the truth. He spoke what he believed in. Anywhere, anytime. He knew the people would not understand it, but he spoke it anyways. He knew he was going to be condemned, but he spoke it anyways. Where is that boldness to stand and say, if I perish, I perish, but I must speak the truth. It is the Holy Spirit that gives the boldness. So if you don't have that boldness, then it means that you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. It is time for us to reevaluate our Christianity. Are we serving God right? Are we doing all that we've been commanded to do? Are we speaking the truth? Even when it makes us the odd one out. The early apostles, they died for what they believed in. Going there to preach Jesus, they knew that they were going to be beaten. They knew that they were going to be jailed. They knew all these things, yet they did it. 
Why? Because the love for God was much more than their own lives. But today we're afraid to come out to speak the truth. You see somebody saying or doing wrong, you can't come out and say, this is against the God that will call upon. This is against God. You can't stand, you will just sit back and watch. How long are we going to fold our hands and watch and see the enemy continuously use Christianity to destroy lives? As a Christian, you are a warrior, you are a soldier. Soldiers and warriors don't just sit back in the house doing nothing. They are always out there fighting for a cause. And in this case, until we begin to stand and speak the truth at all times, not minding how people see us, not minding the consequences. Christianity will still be hijacked by the enemy. Some people are practicing diabolical Christianity because they don't know better. Because nobody is there to teach them the truth. Nobody is telling them the truth. So they, they just practice what they've been taught or what they see. And meanwhile, you know that it is wrong. You see your brother or your sister doing wrong and you can't, you, can, you can't go to them and say, oh, my sister, my brother, this is wrong. This is not what God has asked us to do. You rather keep quiet and let them perish. That's diabolical Christianity. Because the greatest commandment is to love God and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you see your neighbor going astray, it is your responsibility to say, no, that's not the way. I think this is this and this is that. It's left for them to listen. If they don't listen, you have done your part, which is to speak the truth. Time has come. For the real Christians, the true Christians to arise and row, let them hear their voice or their voices saying Jesus is King. Show love, genuine love. You're in church, you're backbiting, gossiping, trying to bring one person down. Pastors are trying to bring, an, a pastor is trying to bring another pastor down. Ministers of God are trying to bring themselves down. Why? Because everybody wants to be relevant. Are you being relevant for the right reason? God is one that lifts up anybody. And when he lifts you up, you remain there. God is the one that makes us rich. Not your dubious schemes. Now today you see a minister of God, you don't know the difference with somebody that is, not, that is in the world. What are we doing? How then are we going to stand apart? How then is our light going to shine? Wake up. The time has come for the true Christians to arise and proclaim the truth. All right, people, that's what I have for us today. 
Um, that being said, we're still going to do what the Lord has called us to do, which is to intercede His divine will. Father, I thank you. I bless you for the change that is taking place in the life of your people. Thank you, O oh God, for what you are doing. Thank you, O oh God, for raising up your people to speak the truth. Thank you, O oh God, for the great awakening that is coming. Hmm. Thank you, O oh God, for pouring out your spirit upon your people. Thank you, O oh God, for the great and mighty works that you were doing. Thank you, O oh God, for turning it around. Thank you, O oh God, for raising end time soldiers. Thank you, O oh God, for your grace and for your mercy upon your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He is say my heart. He is say he is kasuli, he am a su, he is he kasuli, he am. Hallelujah, my sahi, my say he is he is kasu, my heart. My say he is he is kasu, my heart. My he is he is kasu, my he am my su, he is kasuli, he am. Ma he ma he ma se he le ka se wa ha ma su he le ka se ma ha ma su he la he ma su ma he le ye ka se le he ma su ha ma se he le ka su ma ha ma su a le he ma se he ka se le he a ma su he ma he ka se le he a ma su he ka se le be ready because the time is near for the true Christians to arise. Their voices will be heard from all over the world. And they will know that indeed, these are the children of God. When you see them, you shall know that yes, the power of God is upon them. Now here, cause to stop all these dubious miracles, dubious miracles, dubious scams, schemes. Stop it. Because what you sow is what you will reap. Very soon, you will start hearing people dying one after the other. Christians known Christians sooner than we think because God has got God has had enough enough of these treasuries enough of this shame Ama su ale hi e kasele hi ama se hi ma ha ma su hi e le ke su ma ha ma se hi e le ke se ma ha ma se hi le hi ma ha ma su hi e le ke se ma ha mo hi e le kasila hi ma su hi e le hi the body is poisoned it is poisoned That is why there's going to be a great porch that will separate the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the shafts. Hmm. Mahie kasule hiyama sahile hie kasule hiyama. 
mahiele kasele kazula hi amasa hi la hi masu hi ele hi maha amase hi ele kazu maha amase hi ele kazu maha amase hi ele kazu maha mase hi ele kasule hi amasu ha mase hi e kasele hi ma mahi sa hi amasu hi e kasele hi amasu hi le hi maha mama se hi ele kasele hi maha masu hi le if you have love in your heart you cannot cheat another. You cannot scam another. You cannot deceive another. If you truly have love in you, love, you will not lead another astray. So ask yourself, Am I truly serving God? Or oh, I'm just playing religion? Am I truly serving God? Or oh, I'm just deceiving myself? It is time for a self check. And nobody can check you but yourself. You have to do that self check and ask yourself Am I serving God right? Am I being obedient and submissive to God? Am I doing that which God has commanded me to do? I'm high. The time has come for us all to take responsibility for our actions. This is not a time to blame anybody. This did that and this did not do that. This is not a time to blame anybody. But this is the time to do a self check. Oh Lord, am I serving you right? Oh Lord, am I doing it right? Oh Lord, am I right before you? Oh God, have mercy upon me. Wherever and however I have gotten it wrong with you. Self check. Are you practicing true Christianity or you're practicing diabolical Christianity? A lot of us don't know. So this is a time for you to do a self check. So you will know. And if you're not practicing true Christianity, then it is time to repent and turn away. Stop judging others because you don't want to speak the truth. Doesn't mean that, <clears throat> doesn't mean that somebody else will not speak the truth. And when you see the one that is speaking the truth, just be quiet and stop judging another. That is how you have judged and see people are afraid to stand up to speak the truth. And so they sit back and watch how Christianity is being destroyed day by day. If you don't, if you can't stand up and speak the truth, don't judge those that are doing because it is not your place to judge. The truth is naked. It can be seen with the eyes. This is the truth. When you hear the truth, you know that this is the truth. When you see the truth, you know that this is the truth. Except you are in self-denial. That is where a lot of us are today. Because we can't, we can't bear to look at the truth. Why? Because we know the truth and yet we cannot speak the truth. Why? Because we know the truth and they were still hiding the truth. And so when we see the truth, our conscience begins to prick us. Wake up. Stand up. And speak the truth. And declare that Jesus is Lord. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We give you praise, God. 
for what you have done, what you're doing in the life of your people, the hearts that are, that are being changed right now. Father, we thank you for the conviction. Father, we thank you for the works that you are doing. Father, we thank you for your mercy, for your grace. Father, we thank you for just being you, O oh God. We thank you for who you are, a loving Father, a faithful King. Father, we bless you. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. Blessed be your name, O ancient of days. Hallowed be your name, Father. Thank you, O God, for the great awakening. Thank you, O God, for the great awakening. Thank you, O God, for opening the eyes of your people to see the truth that is staring them right at their face. Thank you, merciful Father. Thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you for your word today. I cover everything with the blood of your son, Yeshua. I cover myself with the blood of Yeshua. Father, have your way. Thank you, great and mighty God. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We give God praise. We thank him for what he's doing. We thank him for the great awakening. We thank him for opening the eyes of his people to begin to see that which has been staring at them at their face. We thank you for waking them from their slumber. We just thank God. So like I said, this is a time for self-check. What type of Christianity are you practicing? Are you practicing true Christianity? Or you're practicing diabolical Christianity. You are the only one who can answer that. And if you can't answer that, that means that you really need to have an intimate relationship with God. It means that you don't have an intimate relationship with God. That is the first thing for you to know that you don't have an intimate relationship with God. And so the best thing is to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and turn away from sin. Genuine repentance. That is what God is asking of. God does not want this eye service. Genuine repentance. Where even though you fall, you rise up and say, God, have mercy. And continue to press and continue to push and continue to focus on God and continue to focus on pleasing God, being obedient to God, being submissive to God. That is all that matters. Even when sometimes it's really hard. Like today was really hard for me to come online. I was like, God, I don't feel like it today. I'm really tired. Like I tell us, God is a gentleman. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, it's okay if you don't want to. But I know that my love for God is much more. What he has asked me to do is greater than any other thing that I have to do. And so I'm here. These are the sacrifices that we have to make in the pursuit of this God. Because it's all about him. When he wants it, how he wants it, where he wants it. It's all about him. Pleasing him. When you please God, <laughs> there is nothing else. There is no one else that you can please. Because it says that the acts of kings are in his hands and he turned them like the rivers of water. He turned them to and fro, whichever way. So when you please him, you don't need to please anybody. Why? Because every other person will be pleased with you. Our God is mighty like that. When you kneel before God, you don't have to kneel before anybody. Our God is great like that. But for you to get to that place, you have to create this intimate relationship. Crave for God. Yearn for Him. And pursue Him. With all that you have. Like Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Wherever that race takes you, all well and good. Like I tell us, it is better for you to be obedient and submissive to God and accept Jesus here on earth and go later to the great beyond and find out that there is nothing like that it was all a scam 
than for you to live recklessly here and disobey God and find out that indeed everything that you have heard is true <laughs> because then there is nothing you can do. So is it not better? At the end of the day, is it not better? You know? So like I tell us, I love you, but God loves you so much more. No one can love you like he does. We have given everybody the opportunity to love us. Why don't we give God that same opportunity and see the difference? Because one thing I know for sure is that God is the only one that can love you right. That love that you're looking for in, deep, in wrong places, in different places, God is the only one that can give it to you. Why? Because he is love himself. He is love personified. Why? Because he is your creator, so he knows you better than anybody. No one can love you right except you. So today is a good day for you to say, God, have mercy upon me. Wherever I've gotten it wrong with you, let your mercy find me. I accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe he died and rose again. Come into my heart, cleanse me. I want to have this intimate relationship. I want to know you for you, God. And watch God. Okay, people? Watch God. So I love you. I hope to see you guys on Sunday at 6 p.m. in our other group, The Healing Talk. Have a blessed and wonderful week ahead. Okay? Ciao. Mm-hmm. <laughs>